Welcome to Leaders of the West, a podcast for innovators and change makers. I'm your host, Jesse Jarvis, the founder of Of the West, and I'm sitting down with agriculturalists, entrepreneurs, executives, and everyone in between with the goal of digging into the strategies, mindsets, and lessons that have been crucial to the success of ag and Western. Whether you're carrying on the next generation of your family's operation, starting something from scratch, or determined to climb up the leadership ladder, we're going to inspire you to continue to dream big, growing not just you, but the future of agriculture and Western as a whole. Let's go. Well, hello, you guys. Welcome to this week's episode of the podcast. Today, we are sitting down with Carly Peterson, who is the executive producer of The Cowboy Channel. Now, obviously, that is a very fancy title. And what is even more unbelievable is that Carly is in her 20s. And she has held this position for quite a while now. But somehow, while she's been here for what seems like forever, she's also spent a lot of time working for brands like Bass Pro Shops. She has spent time interning at the college finals with their TV broadcast. And she is quite possibly one of the hardest workers that I have ever met And she is also somebody who is well beyond her years when it comes to her wisdom and insight, which is why she is here today. I am really excited to bring you more of Carly's story because it is one, especially for those of you who may be in the beginning of your careers, that you can really look to for some inspiration. And I know you're going to enjoy this conversation just as much as I adore Carly in person. She is one of my dear friends, and I'm excited to get to share her with you today. So with that, let's get right to today's episode. Today, we are sitting down with Carly Peterson, executive producer of the Cowboy Channel and the Cowgirl Channel. And Carly and I have been friends for quite a while, and I am really excited to have her sit down with you guys because she is so incredibly inspiring. I don't want to give away your age, Carly, but you have done a whole lot of stuff in your life, and you are (laughs) young, which you are a testament to how having a work ethic and being somebody who has a strong network and is a star, how that pays off. So let's get into it. In your own words, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, your career experiences, and what has led you to where you are now? Yes. Well, thank you for having me on. Of course, like you said, we've been friends a long time. So I was born and raised in South Dakota. I'm the middle of three girls. And mom and dad had their day jobs, but our primary deal was that we trained a lot of horses. And so Grew up in the rodeo arena and the sale ring, obviously getting to talk to people all day long about horses and then being outside kind of 24-7. It was pretty special. I didn't exactly spend a lot of time watching TV growing up because we were always outside with horses and things. And so I did really enjoy getting to meet people from a young age. Mom's always joked around that she would lose me a lot of times because I'd just be out visiting with people. And so, you know, getting to meet people and, and everything has been one of my favorite things from a very young age, of course. In high school, I was introduced actually to a thing called Teen Court, and that got me really involved in really falling in love with the whole law system. So when I say the TV was never the plan, I really mean it. However, when I started really looking into that, I got an offer to rodeo for university Wyoming on a full ride scholarship. Obviously, I had to take that. So I knew I loved marketing, wanted to maybe go into law with that. So went to Laramie on that scholarship. And my sophomore year, I got introduced to TV for the first time ever, really, the TV world, TV production. And so it was an internship really only that God could have planned out because I got introduced to the production team that's hired on by ESPN to do the college finals. And so I was at the college finals my freshman year, sophomore year, I was introduced to this team and got asked to come back. And that is the first time that I had ever seen anything behind the scenes with TV, and I've been hooked every every day since. There's nothing better than it. There's this incredible power of TV that I don't think anything else has the power of doing, and I think it's absolute magic. I also got to do in college a lot of work with WCRA, and so that taught me everything from event management to athlete relations to working with clients and sponsors and all of that stuff. So really, it all played into this whole role of preparing Carly for this role that I had no idea was coming. So after I did that internship with the college finals, they took me to the NFR, got to meet everybody at Las Vegas events from that time, went to Rodeo Houston with them, did NFR college finals multiple times again. Senior year of college, the EP, the executive producer at Cowboy Channel contacted me 
said, hey, how would you feel about moving to Texas, helping us launch this new network called the Cowboy Channel? And I was like, well, why the heck not? So they happened to be coming to Cheyenne, Wyoming in like a month or so to meet to discuss the first ever broadcast of Cheyenne Frontier Days. This was spring of 2019. So that's 45 minutes away. I drove down there. I walked in. They were having this huge meeting about Cheyenne Frontier Days, sat down, listened to the meeting. We maybe met for five minutes after, and I was hired. I skipped college graduation, moved to Texas. And then when I got here in June of 2019, I was one of the first, I'd say, five employees. There was none of us here. We did not have a finished studio. We did not have any TV shows at that time. I was the producer, the editor, the graphics op, all of it. We had Amy Wilson was our only talent at that time. We, I mean, we really were a baby. When we did Shine Frontier Days in July of that year was the first ever broadcast in the studio. And it still wasn't finished. It was finished to the point that we could do a broadcast. And then in October of 2019, we launched Western Sports Roundup. And that's where I had created that show. There's, there had been the radio show. Pretty much we took a radio show and made it into a TV show. There's always the joke and the true story that first ever broadcast of that took us six and a half, seven hours to tape a one hour show. We'll never forget that moment. <laughs> and then, of course, we signed the PRCA deal that fall and COVID hit in 2020. And so 2020 through 2022, obviously so much had happened and everything from launching 100 rodeos in 100 days, hiring a crew, creating this whole network, creating a look for the network, creating a feel for the network, all the things over that time. I got to work a lot with Patrick on a lot of projects. He trusted me a lot. And that is eventually where Bass Pro Shops comes in. So everything from South Dakota to Cowboy Channel kicking things off to Bass Pro. And then now we're kind of, we're back at Cowboy Channel and back in this new role. So I've been introduced into a lot of different worlds really quickly in a really short time. And they've all kind of educated me in many different ways that have led us here today. Well, you know, so Carly and I have known one another since those early days of the Cowboy Channel. I remember taking a tour of the studio when it was in construction and meeting with you guys. And then with Western Runway, I remember that we did the like the fashion segment of Western Sports Roundup that was in Vegas. And you guys had never done that before. And now that's kind of turned into like the tailgate show. But I remember back before any of that basically existed. And you guys, as you point out, you were one of the first, what, five hires. You guys were a very, very Mm -hmm. small team and really Mm -hmm. still are, although you have grown and scaled that growth. But a lot can happen in a short amount of time. And you guys are really a true testament to that. Yeah. And I think it's interesting sometimes for people to remember that we just launched in 2019. That is, we're just now in the beginning of 2024. That really is essentially four years. And the fact that Cowboy Channel has grown this quickly, and now I think we're up to 50 to 60 full-time employees specific to Cowboy Channel. Obviously, we have a lot of part-timers that are our studio crew and things like that. But the growth that has happened in not just rodeo, but in, in Western fashion and in the entire industry is incredible. I mean, and it's, and it's so much due to our crew that they really just made this internal decision that they were all in. It was never a conversation. It was never a, we need you to be more committed. You need to believe in this more. It was these people believe in the industry, they believe in the product, and they're 100% committed to making Cowboy Channel everything that it is today. Well, so the, I'm going to get a little off topic here, but I really I can see this as a common thread so far in this conversation, and that is the the idea of divine timing. Yeah. So here you have this opportunity, you think you're going to, going to go into marketing and law, and you get to intern on the back end of TV on the rodeo side of things in Western sports before the Cowboy Channel had ever even been created. Like the fact that that was even an opportunity for you, like that is whatever you want to call it, a God wink or whatever you believe in, that is absolutely that. And then also on the side of the Cowboy Channel, it's created in the fall of 2019. Then here in 2020, Western sports absolutely goes wild because nobody can do anything other than go out and ride their horse or go out and be at an arena event because those were the first things that opened. And people are sitting at home watching TV. You guys have this captive audience to then launch 100 Rodeos in 100 Days. The fact that any of that could have ever happened is just an absolute like 
how on earth? Exactly. And it really is. And then it's all just kind of been a whirlwind and you're just kind of on this ride and you're just, it's when I say we go week by week because nobody knows what's going to happen or what's going to pop up next or anything like that. That's kind of the really nice thing about the fact that we are in TV is because people in TV are incredible at reacting to situations. (laughs) It is literally our jobs. And so the fact that it's a TV network and we had all of these crazy things happen back to back to back, I truly believe that the reason we're able to really take advantage of every opportunity that we probably didn't even realize was an opportunity in that moment is because these people are, their brains are trained to be the greatest people at reacting to every situation. It's awesome. Okay, well, let's talk a little bit about more about your career path and your time at Bass Pro, because I know that you have told me before that that was a really crucial piece of where you are today. So can you tell us a little bit more about that experience? Yes. So I was, um, and, and to kick this all off, before Bass Pro, I had never gone fishing. I had never gone hunting. I don't own camo. My family, we maybe were out in the, like the outdoors a lot, but we did some like hiking, but not really like that intensive hiking, just to lay the ground there. So I <laughs> was a, a rookie when it comes to Bass Pro shops. I was introduced to Bass Pro. A lot, like I said, I got to do a lot of projects for Patrick. Luckily, he had trusted me with a lot from the beginning. And so one of those was him and Johnny Morris are good buddies. And Johnny Morris was having the world's fishing fair in Missouri in spring of 22 is what it was. And so Patrick asked me to go out there and produce a tailgate show at the world's fishing fair every day and go pretty much capitalize on all their guests that were coming, all these different things. So we went out there and at the end of it, and obviously we worked side by side with their team every single day. We didn't know any of these people. Luckily they introduced us to every single person. And so at the end of it, there was a conversation with, their lead of content who said, Hey, would you ever be interested in learning about photo shoots, commercials, potentially working for Bass Pro one day? And I was at this point in my life where I'm like, okay, I know that I want to be the best producer that I can be. And right now I know one industry and one type of producing and that's it. And I was like, okay, I'm 25 years old. I don't have kids. I don't have a husband. It is me and my dog. And so I may not ever have this opportunity again where I can pick up my stuff and move. And who knows if it's going to be a year, five years, two years, who knows where it's going to take me. I just know that as a super big firm believer in education, I needed to go and get way more education. So I said yes and ended up leaving Cowboy Channel. I got two Bass Pro Shops June 1st of 2022. And they believed clearly, they obviously believed a lot of my producing ability because it was not for my knowledge of the industry. And I went and I learned so it's like I went back to college. It's like I went back to college when I went to Bass Pro because the producer's role at that job is to do everything from negotiating model contracts with models coming in from New York City and LA or whatever to doing your film contracts with the city film commission to do the photo shoots or it might be a national park, whatever it is to making sure that your snack box for 15 people has snacks in there that every single person's going to like at the end of the day, to having dinner reservations for a seven-day shoot, to figuring out where in the world you're going to do this apparel shoot for the catalog or what boat shoot are you going to do? What you know? I was over all of the apparel, the boats. I did a lot of duck hunting photo shoots. We did an elk hunt. And then I did all the hiking as well. And so... Because you are overseeing so many different pieces, I, for the first time, was introduced how to see the full circle. And that may seem like such a simple thing, but it is missed every single day. And when you are in your grind and you are just focused on making something happen, you don't understand how your one decision can affect everybody or directly affect this person that has to make this decision based off of what you're doing. Or if this decision is made, what does that mean for your team? If you're going to set your team up to succeed, because end of the day, your team is only so successful depending on how you set them up. If you set them up to be successful, they will be. And so if you're making these decisions, but you're not communicating with the team or you're not making decisions based off of what's going to be best for everybody or communicating them, then the full circle is now broken. And so being introduced to 
to that was a, a huge, huge piece. Another big piece of that was, and <laughs> this is not exactly something that our industry is great at, but it's understanding and respecting people's private lives and time away from their jobs and having a life and being a human outside of work and making memories that are not just connected to your job and meeting people that are not just an advantage to you or your future or might introduce you to someone else that helps you out. And I'm not saying work-life balance is 100% realistic, but I am saying recognize moments to be human and to allow yourself to to lay back a little bit. They 100% taught me how to use my resources. I was very well known for burning myself out at Cowboy Channel and thinking I was smart enough to do it all. And turns out there are people out there that already know how to do those things. And you should ask for help because they can give you great help and they can give you great advice and they can teach you a lot in humbling yourself and, and allowing other people to come in. Ooh, that last one. That's a hard one. One, because you're young. Yeah. So you naturally think that you can do it all. And we have all been there. Like that is the curse of being somebody between 21 and 28, right? Like you think that you are superhuman and you also, you just left home and you have all of this knowledge and you think, holy cow, I know everything. And then you realize, oh, wait a minute. No, I don't. There are actually people who have spent 10, 20, 30 years in this and they understand even the most like little finest details that make the biggest difference. And having those people at your disposal is is huge. Yes, it is. And listening to what they have to say. Don't just stop listening just to answer. Listen to what they have to say. Because if they've been there for 20 years, I had been there for two months. I had left everything that I knew for the past 25 years and the one and only industry that I knew and thought that I was going to bring some knowledge into this whole new world. (laughs) And (laughs) jumps on you. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it actually was like, sit down, listen to everybody else. You need to, this is your time to get educated. And so once I entered that mindset of, okay, Carly, you're here to get educated. You're not here to show everybody how much you know. It completely transformed A, my career there, the opportunities that I got there, how the shoots went, the different stuff we got to do, and the credibility that I got from them and just everything. It was a huge turning point. So when we were at NFR this past December, we got a chance to sit down together. And I jokingly told you when I saw you that I was surprised that you weren't sitting in a TV truck somewhere and that you were out and about. Because obviously the NFR is the biggest, what, two weeks for the Cowboy Channel. And you had told me that you really focused on building a team around you and letting that team handle things versus trying to be a micromanager. And like I said at the beginning of this, I am always impressed with you, but I was really in awe of you that day because again, we I mean, you're young, Carly, and you've done a whole lot, but to be somebody who can identify the importance in building a team and then letting the team do what they are there to do, that's something that people who have long retired have never figured out yet. So I'd like to kind of dig into this topic. Can you give us a little bit of a glimpse into what made you realize that you needed to assemble that team? And that you couldn't do it all. Yeah. The primary part was the first time I was at Cowboy Channel. The first time I was at Cowboy Channel, I wouldn't allow anyone to help me with anything. And getting that knowledge and getting that education from Bass Pro that I do have resources and having a team of resources is a a huge piece of being successful and acknowledging that. And here's the other deal too. When I kept trying to do everything, I thought that I was doing something good. But I kept, I failed over and over and over and I couldn't figure out why. And I really did feel that the more that I did, the more that I would learn. But then end of the day, I was still in the same knowledge base because I was so focused on going, going, going. I never saw what I was actually doing. I never actually realized the full scope of what I was doing and that it really was not building anything to what I should have been building. I also, my friends know this about me. I'm a huge nerd about watching the news in the morning and you keep hearing, you know, I don't even remember what I was watching, but I remember watching this day and they, they kept talking about my support staff, my team, my, and they built up their people so much. And it almost gained such a level of respect for that person because it was like, they don't, they're not taking credibility for doing it. It's they're giving the credibility where it's due. They have a team and their team got them here. 
It's not, they, there was no, I built this, I did this, I did this. It's a we, it's a we statement. We did this, the team did this, everybody put the hours and hours into this. And when I accepted that there are people that can help you to make things happen and looking for that team, looking for my support staff, if you want to call it, there's a moment of it being really difficult in the beginning. And now there's a really beautiful moment of, I can't wait to call this person because I need this question answered or this person because I need advice for this or this person because I think I have an idea for this, but I also know that they're really good creatively. And so we're going to build off of that together. And then we're going to go build something way better because five mindsets together are way better than one at the end of the day. Oh, absolutely. So when you're an entrepreneur, it's pretty easy to assemble a team because you're in charge. So you make the decision to, hey, I'm going to hire somebody and you start the process. But when you're working at a company or for somebody else, that can be much more challenging. So how did you facilitate the conversation between you and Patrick or you and whoever it was at the time to get the go ahead to build that team beneath you? Sure. So it really wasn't so much about getting the go ahead. It was following in the footsteps of Jeff Metters. I mean, he's, end of the day, he's who introduced this to me. He came in, first time I was introduced to Jeff was in January of 2020. And that's how he led a team. And it also goes, it's a lot of Jeff that taught me this. It also goes back to that very first internship I had it with the college finals with David Glott and Maria Prekajis, Chuck Walker. They instilled in me as an intern, this level of empowerment and confidence to go out and make my own decisions and to make creative decisions. And I was, they had put so much confidence in me that I felt like I had so much ability to actually succeed. And I couldn't wait to go out and do it again. I couldn't wait to go out and and see what else I could do or, or pitch them ideas or show them, Hey, I did this. What do you think? What don't you like about it? How can I change this? How can I change that? Because I knew no matter what I did, I had a backing. I had someone behind me that was supporting me, that was empowering me to be better. And that was going to educate me every step of the way. And Jeff leads a team the same way. And it was very, very obvious to me in the beginning when he first got here. And it always was. And, you know, we worked side by side together and everything. He called it the inverted triangle. And so, and that's how he explained it to me. And it's, it's a management style that you can find on the internet, but pretty much picture an upside down triangle, upside down. Typically, you see a regular triangle where it's the top dog is at the the top of it and then kind of goes down. Your frontline workers are at the bottom. This is is exactly the opposite. End of the day, my editors, my producers, they are my frontline workers and they are the ones that are making the network successful. They are the worker bees that are producing Western Sports Roundup every single day. They are producing all of the content. I may have the creative ideas or the formats behind them or certain things that I want to change behind them or whatnot end of the day, they are my people that it is the most important that I empower them and I give them every tool to be successful that I possibly can because I want them to feel that level of confidence that I felt. I want them to have, I want them to be excited to show me something new. I want them to be excited to, to feel like they are doing something special because they are. And that's why I want to stay the heck out of their way and allow them to be creative and be these great producers and editors and studio techs and everything else. So I want to rephrase this because I think that you, again, this is so spot on, but because this is so important. So you as a leader and your team, it is not, your team is not there to help you get what you need. You as the leader are there to help your team provide the resources and the answers and whatever it is that they may need to do their jobs. A hundred percent. And that's where I want my team to know that call me at any moment of the day with any question that you have, because I want to be your backbone. I want to be your backbone. I want to help you. I want you to grow as an individual, as a producer. If you have, I have an AP here that she has been honest with me from the start. Her goal is to be a producer for a major basketball team. Okay. You were honest with me and you want me to help you grow into that. I can't wait. That's awesome. Because you want my help to go and become something great. And if we get to watch you grow into that role, then we did our jobs as a leader. That's what I have been taught from the leaders that brought me here to this place. I'm 26 years old. I would not be 26 and in this position had I not had leaders that empowered me 
from the first day of an internship when I knew nothing about television to working for Bass Pro Shops who for a girl who had never gone fishing or owned camel or anything and had and then to uh, back to Cowboy Channel to lead a team of 50 people at 26. Had I not had people that completely put in my mindset that I am capable of doing it. Oh, well, you know, so we we keep talking about this idea that when you went to Bass Pro, you didn't know anything necessarily about hunting and fishing other than the fact that it's done outdoors. But how important is it to get out of our own industry to get new knowledge and then bring it in? That's something here of the West that we talk about a lot. And we see a high level of importance. And because that's the only way that we can continue to grow and strengthen our industries is if we go get outside knowledge and bring that back in. It is, I think, one of the most important things that we can do. And I almost think it's a due diligence to our industry. Our industry may feel really big. We're small in the big scope of things. And that's a really beautiful thing in a lot of ways. However, there is so much knowledge out there. And I don't care if you go to sports. I don't care if you go to the restaurant world to learn more about customer relations or marketing. Or if you go to any industry in the world, go out there because every single person has something to teach you. And there is something new that you can learn every day. And whether it is something from the way that you treat other people to the way that you produce a TV show, to the way that you lead a team, to the way that you sell to your clients, to the way that you set up your emails. I don't care. There is something that you can learn every single day that's going to affect your future life. Go and get that knowledge and get it at a young age. Because like I said, I luckily I was in a position where I could pack up my stuff and leave. And you may not always be in that position. And if you are, take the opportunity and run. Oh, amen to that. I will tell you, I obviously with a husband and little kids and a ranch, I am not in the opportunity where I get to just go at my, you know, by choice. And I absolutely wish that I would have done more of that when I had the opportunity to do it because you will come to a point where it is it is less available than it was. So if you guys, if you're listening and you have the opportunity to go and learn and do and experience, absolutely hands down do it. What are you waiting for? Yeah. And the cool thing about Bass Pro was I had so much fun. TV is one of the most rewarding jobs that you can ever have. And TV will be where my heart lies forever. However, I have more memories in nine or 10 months from being at Bass Pro than I could have ever dreamed. The places that we got paid to go to the most beautiful places in the country and take photos for photo shoots. I mean, it was amazing. And it was, I spent almost the whole month of August on a boat because we were doing all the different boat shoots and that can be grueling because you have like 3 a.m. call times and stuff. But we went... For a girl that's never been involved in that world, and then all of a sudden, I find myself at Gros Savant at one of the most beautiful fishing hunting lodges in Louisiana and getting to work with all these people. And and then all of a sudden, I'm up with with Tony Vandermore, a world-class duck hunter, to St. Augustine, Florida, doing a, a women's apparel shoot, to the middle of nowhere mountains, Utah, doing an elk hunt. I mean, that is, take the opportunity. I mean, go, absolutely go. Go do it. Oh, amen to that. Okay. I always hate when I get this question, but I'm going to ask it anyways. You are a young woman in what many would consider to be a man's field. How do you ensure that you, as the executive producer of the Cowboy Channel at 26 years old, that you are taken seriously and seen as an equal? Yeah, it's the reality of it. I mean, it's like it or not, I have a reputation and an image to uphold if I expect anyone at all to respect me at all female or male. And it's a really big priority for me. I very much believe that first impression is everything. That's how our mom raised us. We were not allowed to wear sweatshirts to high school. If you wanted to be treated a certain way, you know, it's the same, it's the same dress how you want to be addressed. And she always told us, and I'm so thankful she instilled this in us from a very young age, be an adult if you want to be treated like one. And I love that. It, it's really that simple we need male leaders. We need male leaders and we need female leaders. And male leaders have a lot to teach us. <laughs> and, and so I like learning from them. I also think that everyone here is the same. And I think a lot in our industry, there's more business done at the bar than in the conference room. That is true. I do love to. <laughs> yes. While I do love to go get cocktails and see everybody, you have to have a very high level of self-awareness. 
to be a young female in this industry in a high role and you expect people to look at you with a little bit of respect. It is very easy to go to the bar and stay a little too long, slur your words, say some things you didn't mean to, and it all can happen way too easily. And I'm very aware that's not an option for me. And so I do love to go out and I also know when it's time to go home. And you have to recognize that. Your self-awareness has to be very, very high. Something that I've learned a lot of, especially lately, is because I now being in this EP role is I get put in a lot of difficult situations. It's just the nature of it. Nothing bad, just the reality. Handling those situations with pure class, A, is really important and sometimes really difficult. <laughs> oh, it is. That <laughs> is so me. hard, right? Sometimes that you want to, your gut reaction is what you want to do and you've got to sit there and, okay, that's, <laughs> Like I've got to cool it down. That's can't I can't actually respond that way, even though I'm going to in my yep. head. Oh, that is yep. a tough one, and I think that's one that we all still oh, fight. Ooh. But it all comes back There's, to professionalism. Um, it does. It really does. And my, I, I do think I got my dad's way of arguing because my dad has always impressed me so much. I truly, I literally, I call my dad the rodeo queen of dads because he's incredible. He has three daughters and my mother, and we all are a tiny bit high personality. And he, he has never, I think I've heard him raise his voice three times in my lifetime. And that is something that I have tried to carry over to my world is that, okay, you can have a very effective conversation without raising your voice. And so that I tried to do business a lot that way is there's, you're not going to get anywhere by yelling at somebody. You're just not. And you need to handle it with grace and with class and still be kind to people at the end of the day. But also understand there's a line of, I'm going to stand my ground because I do need to get some business taken care of. And the other one, and we've kind of talked about this. The other one, it's, it's kind of personal, but I do think it's something that needs to be addressed with young women. You won't see me out in public with a guy that I'm talking to. I don't understand why people think that you can bring out your boyfriend of the week and expect other men leaders to respect you, but you never know who you're going to show up with that week. You know, it's, I'm, and my friends laugh at me. They're like, we've never met anybody. I'm like, when I meet the person I'm going to be with, that's who you all will meet. That's who I will bring out to the business relations. There is no need to bring your private life into your business life. And I think there is a big cutoff there or a big misunderstanding maybe of girls thinking that they're bringing out a guy because I actually honestly don't know why. But I think that there needs to be a very fine line of women understanding that if you want to be respected, show yourself as a respectful woman. Yes. The the respect that you want to see from like the actions that you want to see others, that is what you then also have to portray as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It all absolutely goes back to the importance of professionalism for sure. Yeah. Okay. Let's get to the rapid fire round. What's the best piece of business or personal advice you've ever been given? Easily it is you need people, people to like your work, not you. I gained every ounce of credibility when I stopped being worried about people pleasing and I let my work speak for itself. Totally, completely changed my career. Oh, that is a good one. We're going to have to write that down and drop that on a little quote card in our stories because mm, that I, like it. I needed that. Okay. If you could give people any words of wisdom and you knew that they would take them to heart, what would it be? Truthfully, I mean, to be kind of blunt, if you want to be successful at a young age, I get your personal life in order and get focused. Put yourself in a position where and make certain decisions where your personal life cannot affect your work life. Everything from probably going to get a smaller group of friends, you're going to stop partying so much, you're going to sleep some regular hours at night and take care of your body, you're going to dress classy, you're going to set yourself up, get your personal life in order so your work life can be too. Get some sleep, drink some water. I love that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> if you could go to dinner with anybody dead or alive, who would you pick? That's easy. Jimmy Monroe. And Jimmy and I, we actually go to dinner a lot together because... And she's one of my dearest friends. She's going to mentor and like a second mother to me. And whenever I'm traveling, she takes care of my dog. And so when I, when I go down there to drop my dog off, we go to this place called, <laughs> this is so funny. We go to this place, it's called the Head Place. And it's the little like restaurant right next to their place. And we get the same meal every single time. We split the fish and chips with a side of grilled zucchini and a margarita. And then we get dessert to go so that we can have wine and dessert at home. <laughs> we usually end up telling like rodeo stories or of course she was raised on the 101 ranch and I could have that dinner with Jimmy every single week. 
there or day. I it is my favorite dinner in the world. Okay, well, her. am I allowed to invite myself <laughs> to this dinner because I yes. absolutely could get behind fish and chips, grilled zucchini, yes. margarita, good old rodeo ranch stories. Okay, sign me up. Okay, what is one quote that you lead your life by? Everyone knows this about me. My number one quote is that no stands for new options. There is always a solution to every single thing. There is nothing that cannot be fixed. There is nothing that does not have some type of way that it can't be figured out. No stands for new options. I have never heard that before. And holy cow, Carly Peterson, this is exactly why you're here. No stands for new options. Everybody gets that, right? N-O, new options. Yes. I love that. Okay. Now, last question. Let's talk about favorite things. Do you have a favorite, like a book, podcast, a life hack, some service that you absolutely couldn't live without? What is something that has changed your life that more people need to know about? So I started, and everyone, I love mornings. I believe that the mornings are the greatest time of the day. It is the most beautiful time of the day. Most people are not awake yet, especially in the early morning. It is peaceful, all the things. So this totally changed my life. And I hope that everybody kind of gets to do something like this if they don't already. Last spring, I, and I already start my morning with coffee in the news. There, that has not changed. However, I started when I go for a walk with my dog in the morning, I started leaving my phone at home and I made that my God time. And I go for a walk and I go and I get in full conversations with God and talk about everything. And I'm sure I'm the crazy lady that's out walking by the river. Literally, I am, I do live on the river. And so I, and I, we just, I just talked to God and I always end it with thanking him because as you get to know God more, I've noticed the conversations change and it changes a bit into more of a, I thank him and I thank God for so many different things. Everything from, you know, a being a having a healthy family to, I really do believe coming back in this leadership position that it was God put me in a position to serve him by serving his people. And that's something I talked to God about a lot. And so that's totally transformed my life. It's hard not to have a good day when you get to start a day with coffee, the news, walking on the river and talking to God. <laughs> so, oh, I love favorite, that. It's my favorite way. I tell you what, the, you know, the jelly roll song, I only talk to God when I need a favor. When I heard that the first time I was like, oh, that is a gut punch. I think I Shoot. probably better be getting, get better about that and just talk to him more in general. So yes, yeah. Carly Peterson, again with some very, very incredible words of wisdom. Carly, thank you so much. If people want to hang out with you and kind of follow along, get to know you even better than they did today, where can they find you out online? Yeah, check me out. I'm on Instagram, primarily Instagram and Facebook. And then I do a lot on LinkedIn. I really, I love LinkedIn. I love seeing the different successes that everyone's having in their job. And if they move on to another job, I love checking into those things. So I'd say Instagram or LinkedIn. Jesse, you've got my number. If someone wants to call me, you know that I love talking to people. If anybody has questions about internships or advice or anything like that all day long, I'd love to make time to visit with anybody. Oh, well, that is exactly why you are here because you are the salt of the earth and you just put good into the world and you have gotten a lot of good back, but it is all because of the hard work that you've put in. So one, just congratulations on everything that you have done. And as a friend, it is so cool to see somebody who is so deserving succeed in the level that you have. And that is all just based on who you are and what you've done. So congratulations. And thank you. thank you so much for hanging out with us today and sitting down. For those of you who were listening, please let us know your favorite part of today's episode, whether you send us a DM or you drop it in your stories. We absolutely want to see it. I have a feeling it's going to be the NO, new opportunities, or the what was your other quote, the best piece of business or personal advice? What was it again? I need people to like my work, not me. Yes, that was another good one. See? Okay. Well, thank you guys so much for listening, and we will be back here next week. If you loved this episode, do us a favor and share it with someone else who might find just as much value in it as you did. We're on a mission to continue to grow and strengthen the future of agriculture and Western industries, and you spreading the word helps us make more of a positive impact. It also makes a big difference when you take a minute to go rate and review the show. We can't thank you enough for listening, for sharing, and for loving Ag and Western as much as we do. We'll see you back here for our next episode.